Hello everyone and welcome to round one of Norway Chess, the only tournament in the world where there are no draws. Uh, what does this mean? Well, it means that if the classical game ends in a draw and Armageddon is immediately played and then uh, the, uh, the, the, the round is decided. So uh, the, the classical game might end in a draw, but one player will win the encounter. Uh, so uh, you get more points for winning in classical, but it's uh, better to, you know, even if you get a draw to, to, to win the Armageddon game at least. And most games, uh, I believe, will finish that way. Uh, however, uh, even in round one, some games uh, ended in a, a decisive result in classical. So hope you guys will enjoy this one. It's a really, a tr it's truly a masterclass. So uh, you guys can learn a lot from it. Uh, so let's let's dive straight into it. It's Vishwanathan Anand versus Maxim Vashelagrav again with the black pieces. And you know that Maxim uh, always brings something special to the party when he when he uh, has the black pieces, even even in classical, as you'll see here. So Anand opens with e4 uh, which uh, of course you know uh, if you play against Maxime you are playing the Sicilian defense so here we have c5 knight to f3 and d6 now sorry about that uh, we have bishop to b5 check. Uh, this is how Anand challenges the Sicilian, not with the d4 opening the position right away. Bishop to d7, uh, so the, the canal attack. We have bishop captures and d7, queen captures, and now pawn to c4. Uh, grabbing control over the d5 square, and we, as we always say, if black still hasn't played knight to f6, you always have time to uh, get this c4 move in. So knight to f6, we have knight to c3. Now uh, you can see that this position is much, much better than the pawn being on c2 this way already you have played your pawn and uh the, the knight can for example get the d5 at some point if needed so knight to c6 uh, and now striking in the center with d4 we have captures captures and pawn to g6 maxim wants a fianchetto the dark square bishop and the castle king side we have f3, bishop to g7, and bishop to e3. Both players castle, castles, castles, and now a6. And interestingly, uh, this position has reached uh, has been reached many, many times. There are many popular options here. For example, pawn to e4 is very popular, rook to c1, very popular, queen to... Uh, d2 very popular uh, but Anand uh, prepared well for this game uh, he knows that Maxim already had this position last year in the FTX Crypto Cup he had it against Fabiano Caruana Caruana played queen to d3 and he won that game against Maxim so obviously Maxim analyzed this position thoroughly uh, because you do uh, uh, when you are uh, playing at their level you analyze both the games you lose the games you draw and the games you win it's like Kasparov said the the most important games to analyze are the ones that you you win win uh, because that's where your opponents will will look for uh you know the, the most weaknesses but here Anand completely disregards all of that and he, he prepares a move that has never been played before he plays knight to b3 so now already as of move 12 we have a completely new game and what does this knight to b3 move uh, do well uh, it uh, removes all the tension from the d4 square uh, and now Anand wants to move the queen to e2 which would be impossible uh, you know with all this pressure and he wants to bring the rook this rook to d1 and this rook to c1 so it uh, it seems like a very nice uh, developing idea so here e6 maxim uh, also continues his development queen to e2 and now queen to e7 of course maxim knows that the rook uh, is coming to d1 so rook f to d1 rook f to d8 and rook a to c1 anand finishes uh, his development we have rook a to c8 maxim also finishes the development and only now anand brings the knight back to d4 so uh, here we have knight to d7 and this is already a very interesting move in the position because uh, this is the moment where Anand is asking Maxim uh, are you ready to, to execute d5 because if you uh, if there's any player that is always ready to ex execute the d5 central breakthrough uh, it is Maxim Vashilagrav, but here uh, he doesn't do it, and it's a very interesting line. Uh, for example, d5, we have to go for knight captures on c6 to avoid opening up the center completely, because then black just equalizes. Knight captures on c6, b captures, and now e5. We challenge the knight, knight d7, and now pawn to f4. And you get this position, which is incredibly flexible, nothing is fixed, uh, and you can challenge the center in a variety of ways. You can play f6 to challenge e5, you can play g5 to challenge f4, so many, many uh, good good options here uh, even queen to b4 putting pressure on both c4 and, and some pressure on b2 so the, you can play this many different ways but maxim goes for knight to d7 but maxim always plays the the most interesting idea so this should not um, be all that uh, mysterious to us uh, and anand plays b3 
And now you have this classic Marozzi bind setup, uh, pawns on a, a, a to b3 and c4, and pawns on g to f3 and d4, and it's uh, very hard for black to make any progress here. White has an immense grip on the d5 square, you can see that the pawns control it, the knight controls it, the rook controls it, and it's just uh, very hard for black to make uh, uh, any sort of uh, a breakthrough here. Uh, however, Maxim finds one. It's not the most safest one, uh, but he does it anyway. And he plays b5, and this is a classical MVL move that uh, just, uh, you know, uh, completely lights the game uh, on fire. Uh, so what can you do? It seems like the pawn can just be captured because you are attacking that b5 square four times. Uh, but not really. Uh, Anand goes for it, c captures on b5, but now we play knight captures on d4. Bishop captures, bishop captures, rook captures, and now uh, there is no rook on d1 to defend the rook on c1, so we play a captures on b5. And now the knight cannot capture as the rook on c1 is undefended. So the real challenge to Anand is do you capture the pawn on b5? Uh, but uh, this would give Maxim too much counterplay. Anand uh, agrees uh, as, uh, for example, if queen captures on b5, it looks amazing. You have two connected pass pawns on the queen side. Uh, you give uh, uh, really a lot of counterplay to, to Maxim. Rook c5 attacks the queen. Now you have to be careful. Next move, queen g5 is coming. Uh, that will put pressure on the rook here. So it's best to bring the queen all the way back and now we're just gonna play rook d to c8 and now you have you're down a pawn with black but you have complete control over the e file or over the c file and you say okay white doesn't really have all the time in the world to start pushing those pawns on the queen side now uh, let's say queen e1 uh, we're gonna put the knight on e5 and now uh, it's just a it's just a very flexible uh, and a very nice position for black and there are many tricks in the position for example if f4 you want to chase away the knight there's even queen a7 just uh, the king is still on g1 the rook is on d4 it's very very um, uh, awkward playing this with white so you have to play king to h1 and now we just play knight g4 an excellent square for the knight and if h3 we just bring the knight back and already there are so many holes here uh, the the white king's position has been extremely weakened and after let's say rook captures on d6 we're gonna play queen to c7 and now we we own the c file for the rest of the game and uh, we uh, have immense pressure here on the knight uh, if the rook moves uh, we pick up the f4 pawn so uh, even though white is uh, black is down two pawns for the moment, uh, Maxim would have insane counterplay here. So Anand says, "I'm not interested in this. That's uh, you know th those are your kind of positions. I'm just going to play queen to d2, and I'm going to go after the real weakness in the game, and that is the d6 pawn. And this move is much much stronger than just grabbing on b5. So here rook to b8, defending the pawn." Uh, you don't really have a good way of uh, of dealing with this. If you just defend the pawn, we're gonna capture on b5. Uh, so uh, be best just to play b5, b4 like uh, like Maxim did. But not right away. Uh, first he defended it, rook to b8. Uh, now comes rook captures on d6, and now pawn to b4. And again, Maxim will get counterplay for his sacrifice material. Knight to e2. Now comes knight to e5. And uh, okay, how do you how do you play this now? Uh, we have rook to d1, just threatening to play rook captures here. And of course, any trades uh, are favorable for Anand as he is up material now. So knight to c6, defending the uh, the rook here. And now you can't really just go trading because then rook captures and you might have problems here. So here Anand finds a brilliancy of a move, and that is pawn to e5. It seems like it's impossible because the knight controls that square, uh, but the knight cannot keep an eye on the e5 and the the d8 square uh, at the same time so this is just a beautiful beautiful move and now if uh, rook captures we're gonna capture with the pawn here and then have a beautiful pass pawn on d6 already so queen to a7 check king to h1 and now queen to f2 maxim again always finds counterplay for his sacrifice material uh, because okay anand has the two pawns against one on the queen side but uh, this pawn is uh, paralyzing the entire the entire structure this is a backwards pawn you can't just play a4 uh, so it's not easy for Anand to, uh, you know, make uh, make sense of of his extra pawn. But there is one move that allows him to win this position. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find the only move that wins for Anand uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this, uh, well, a beautiful positional move. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Rook to C1.
that's the good stuff. So to, to find this move, and I congratulate you all uh, who, who were able to do this, uh, to find this move, you first have to check what happens if we just take here. Well, rook captures here, and now our queen is hanging. Uh, so we have to move the queen, and once we move the queen, we first trade a rook captures, queen captures, and now we just move our king. Uh, it's going to be incredibly safe here. We don't even want to capture the e5 pawn. The e5 pawn will save us from all the checks, and there is no uh, pressure that the white queen can just uh, mount uh, alone. And, you know, uh, the, the white king is extremely weak here on h1. Let's say we play knight g1 because we can't move the queen while our knight is hanging. We're going to start bringing the knight into the game and Maxime's position would be just much, much better. So if you see that this is impossible, you realize that your only problem is having the rook on d1. So rook to c1 solves all your problems and that's how you reach to this conclusion. Uh, now uh, Maxime's knight is hanging, so that's uh, that's a big problem. And you can't move it because then just rook captures on d8 wins the game. So the only move here is to capture the rook, rook captures, but now Anand gets his pass pawn. E captures on d6. Uh, knight to e5, and now we have h3. Uh, Anand uh, creates some breeding room for his king, but not only that, he's preparing f4, and he does not want to give up the g4 square to the knight. If the knight comes to g4, you're going to have uh, problems here. So rook to b5, and now pawn to f4, moving the knight. And if the knight doesn't go to d7, then we just start pushing our pass pawn and win the game. So knight to d7 by MVL, and now queen d4. Now offering a rook trade, uh, a queen trade, and there is no good way to avoid this. It seems like you can... Uh, uh, for example, capture a free knight here, but rook c8 check, and now there's a problem. The queen covers g7, and you have to play something. Knight to f8, now you play rook captures on f8, king captures, and queen to h8, a beautiful checkmate. This is what Anand found, uh, and uh, of course, uh, the tactics uh, work in his favor. So queen to d4, just a beautiful move, <laughs> offering a free knight seemingly, uh, but it's uh, actually checkmate if Maxim goes for it. So there's really nothing better. Uh, queen captures was played, but now knight captures attacking the rook and there is now no way to uh, well to do any any sort of resistance here rook to d5 goes after the pawn here and the knight but uh, anand says i'm just going to transfer one of my advantages to, to the other uh, and uh, well that's also perfectly fine knight to c6 now goes after the b4 pawn uh, so rook captures knight captures on b4 now the pawn comes alive and now anand has two connected pass pawns on the queen side e e5, we have captures on e5, knight captures on e5, and rook to c5 now, attacking the knight, rook d1, check king h2, and now pawn to f6, defending the knight. So Anand is up only one pawn, uh, but it's two connected pass pawns on the queen side, and that's uh, a, a, a big problem for Maxime. Pawn to a4, we have rook to b1, attacking on b3, just rook c3. Anand defends the pawn, rook to a1, and now on move 40, uh, Anand played rook to c7, and it was in this position position on move 40 that Maxim Vashela Grab resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. So you might think, okay, it's too early to resign. It's only one pawn. Uh, the problem is, uh, uh, okay, one pawn sometimes isn't all that much if you, for example, have an active king. But here with rook to c7, Anand completely uh, blocks uh, the, the king from entering the game and there's just no uh, way to find a, a good move for black. If the king was on c3 instead of on g8, of course, okay, not c3, the king would be in check there. But let's say on d2 then it would be easier to play this you would have uh, a lot more a lot more counterplay uh, however on g8 there really is no counterplay and to give you an example uh, let's say we go knight f7 we want to somehow bring the king into the game we have to block the uh, the, the seventh rank somehow uh, we're just going to play knight d5 go after the pawn after f5 we play rook a7 and now we just start advancing our pawns uh, let's say king g7 b4 uh, we're going to bring the king into the game, g5, let's say b5, and now king to g6. We've managed to bring the king all the way to the 6th rank, but now b6. White spawns are just too fast, and there's no, no dealing with this. Uh, rook to b1, b7, and now let's say knight to d8, going after the pawn. And it seems like uh, now you've blundered the, the pawn, uh, but I've prepared a very, very cool trick for you, and just uh, show you how to, how to win this. Knight to b6. 
and that's it. Next move, we promote our pawn to, to a queen. Uh, of course, the knight cannot capture because the rook defends. And of course, if you capture the rook, uh, then uh, you say, haha, I've tricked you. I I, I got, <laughs> uh, you got your king to the sixth rank thinking you've actually made some progress, but this allows me this beautiful trick with rook to a6. And now you don't have a move. If you capture the rook, we bring a queen into the game. And if you don't, there's really nothing for you to play. You can't play rook captures because the rook is pinned. And if knight captures, then we capture the rook with check. Once the king moves, we capture the knight and that's it. Now we promote this pawn and win the game easily. So that's a little bit of extra fun for those of you who watched uh, until the end. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. A very nice victory for Anand in a classical uh, time control. So uh, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Uh, the other game that finished in classical, for those of you who are interested, is Wesley So versus Tamar Rajabov. If, if I manage the time, I will show that one as well. And there were some interesting games uh, in Armageddon as well. But we are mostly going to cover classical ones. If, if like uh, the Armageddon one is incredibly interesting, we're going, going to cover that one as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Round one of the Norway chess uh, has uh, has officially begun. Uh, I would like to thank Nagarjuna Ponugoti. Congrats, Harry. Three grads. Andre Theron, Alexander John Huar, and Valentin Moreira for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. Really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Norway chess tournament uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.